Romans 10, 9, it says, if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I'll be saved. Welcome back. You know, we're going to look at these scriptures here. Let's see what we find. Sometimes, you know what you can do? Just open your Bible. Start reading it and see what you can find. Because God's going to give you a little pearl of great price. He's going to give you something that's going to just make your day. You know, somebody asked me one time, well, how come I can read this Bible? Sometime down the road, I can see, see the same thing and I'll say... Oh, I never noticed that before. I never noticed that before. Because it's daily bread. It never gets stale. You're always going to find something that's going to feed you, even if you've read it a million times. So let's just take a look here in, um, well, let's try Ephesians. We'll miss over the, the uh, introduction part. And... Uh, Okay, it's talking about uh, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. He chose us before the foundation of the world. You know what that means? That means he gave us a free will and he chose the church. But your free will has to say yes to the plan of God. Your free will. And he says, you're chosen from the foundation of the world. And you notice if we would start reading the Bible... Instead of me, 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 my, 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 and start reading it like Paul wrote, wrote it, he has chosen us, us in him. We don't go around saying he chose me, he chose me, he chose us. The church is collective, it's the whole body. And this is what Paul is teaching here. Now, we wouldn't have so much of this false prosperity preaching this false doctrine of self and self and self and self, if we would read this like it's written. And when it's written, it's usually talking about the whole church of God collectively, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. <gasps> holy? And without blame, without blame, before him in love. Love? Well, you know what my neighbor did? You know what those people did? You know what she was wearing? They blee, blee, blee. Love? Backstabbing your neighbor love? Mm -mm. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. You notice that? Having predestinated us collectively, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, us, it was already, the, the church was already a, ordained of God before the foundation of the world. Before Jesus spoke the world into existence, he already knew there was going to be a church and a bride prepared for him. He already knew. And you know how you get in it? You hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and you say yes to Jesus and that's how you get into it. Be willing to... To repent of your unbelief in him, that's the first thing. Or your unbelief in the false Jesuses you've been preached to, uh, been told about in, in cults. You're willing to believe in the Bible Jesus, God incarnate, the only way to heaven. The only one that has any works that will open the door to heaven is Jesus Christ. And his works on the cross paid it all. And so it's for all of us, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. 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 You know, that word could also mean mercy. According to his mercy. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us, us, it's always us. He's, he's never saying me, 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 my, my, me. He doesn't say that. It's us. He's talking about the body of Christ. The mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. 
that in the dispensation of the fullness of time he might gather into one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. And this is what we're showing you, some of these little things. The dispensation of the fullness of time. This revelation shows us a little bit about that fullness of time. At the fullness of time, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. And that's why we're always interested in his prophecies. In the fullness of time. In whom also we have obtained the inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, not our will, that we, not me, not my, not I, but we, the body of Christ, should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Isn't he wonderful? I have another video that's just beautiful. So let's just take a look at it. And every eye shall see him. Jesus was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Suddenly, two men dressed in white appeared. Why are you looking into the sky? Jesus will come back in the same way you have seen him go. Knowledge will increase. Men will travel to the ends of the earth. There will be wars and rumors of wars. But the end is yet to come. These are just the beginning of birth pains. You will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. For there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now. At that time, the sight of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and all the nations of earth will mourn. For the Son of Man in his day will be like the lightning, which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. Look, he is coming in the clouds, and every eye will see him. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We will be with the Lord forever. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Like that, didn't you like that? You know, if you're artistic and everything, you can do things like that and put it on, and that could be a good ministry for you or for anybody. You know, you have to look for a ministry. That's all there is to it. Right now, I'm wanting to try to help feed the 13,000 homeless we have in Las Vegas right now. <clears throat> but we're a very generous sort. And I know that maybe some little widow can't give more than a can. And a lot of people are out of work. But you know, the more poor you are, the bigger you give. And that little widow gave everything she had. But you know, when we call for cans of corn, we need a case of cans of corn. When we call for some oranges, we need a big 50-pound bag or however they come of oranges. See what I'm saying? You can do that. That's not as expensive as you think it is. And believe me, it will feed lots of people. 
So if anybody's interested in helping me with that, you know my phone number. It's right down there for you, and, and we're going down uh, soon, down uh, to uh, the streets in Las Vegas. <coughs> so let's continue with this little message that I've been reading here in Ephesians 1 and 113. It says, In whom you also trusted, meaning Jesus Christ, that after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ooh, we're sealed with that spirit of promise. God isn't going to forget us. He isn't going to leave us back. Those of you that struggle with sin, and we all do, don't beat up on yourself so much. You'll make it. Just keep repenting. Just keep trying. You'll make it. You'll make it. But you know, because God's going to reach down and make sure you make it. You're going to make it. Which is the earnest of our inheritance, that little spirit of promise, that little... The, the, the fact that we're sealed by his precious Holy Spirit. And it's the earnest of our inheritance until when? Until the redemption of the purchased possession. That's what we're talking about, about his coming. He's coming to redeem his purchased possession. You are his purchased pose possession. I am his purchase, purpose, <laughs> purchased possession. We, the body of Christ, are his purchased possession and he's coming to redeem us you know what that means he got rid of the reign of death that's what he did and to the praise of his glory it's wonderful this is such good news this is such good news and mixing this good news with the message of the last days and everything, it's great because you teach people not to fear, but to look forward to those things that are coming because death will be swallowed up in victory. No doubt about it. Death will be swallowed up in victory. Jesus is wonderful. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers and that's what i do too for all of you that are watching this program i make mention of you in my prayers and i'm sure you make mentions of me in your prayers just keep it up because we all need these prayers i've had a wonderful time today and i thank you so much for listening to me and i'll be back in a couple of weeks you see my phone number down here it's in las vegas 898-2694 and i love you i'll see you bye Romans 10, 9, it says, If I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I'll be saved.